Hello, good morning, how are you doing? I'm Rachel from I Printed That and I want to welcome you to this morning's Virtual Village Hall Facebook page session. This morning you're going to be getting a two for the price of one because I'm going to show you firstly how to print your own fabric using some really, really basic items this time. So a block of wood and some common old garden string. And then I'm going to show you how to turn that into a reusable bowl cover for when you've got food on the side where you just want to cover it, keep the flies off, just quickly put something in the fridge or take to a picnic. It saves you using single use cling film or foil. So as always, I'm going to start by talking you through the equipment and materials that you need. You're going to need your fabric. So go for something that is light coloured, uh, cotton, something that's washable at a high temperature. Um, I've actually used some old sheeting here, which I'll talk to you a little bit about later. I've also got my fabric paint in, I've got three, uh, four colours. So I've got a pink, um, a yellow, a grey and also a black. Uh, you're going to need some sellotape um, and some paint brushes and a plate. I think that's everything. So we've got a lot to get to this morning. So what I'm going to do is pop you down so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So here we have the fabric. So just lay it nice and flat on a flat surface. Make sure it's well ironed. And I always start by drawing round my bowl. That means that when you print, you're not going to print too much fabric. You're not going to waste time or paint in printing, but you're going to print the area that you need. Now I'm going to add two inches around my bowl, so that's about five centimetres, and I'm just going to draw with a pen all the way around. So this will take in your seam allowance and also, so your, your seam allowance, your hem allowance, and also your overhang. So I do two centimetres for a small to medium sized bowl. If it's a larger bowl, kind of anything over sort of 10 inches, then I would probably add four, four inches at this point. So I'm just going all the way around, all the way around to the top. So this is actually from an old bed sheet that had probably seen better days in some places, but some of it was still very good fabric. So to carry on the reusable theme, um, I gave it a really good wash. It's all laundered. And as you can see, just at the sides, I've just unpicked it so that I've got lots of really good quality material to use and print onto. So that's our bowl drawn around. So I can put the bowl to one side and then we can start printing. So I start by putting just some paper underneath so I don't make a big old mess on the table. And we're going to start by printing these coloured blocks and that's just using the piece of wood. So the piece of wood I've got here is seven and a half centimetres by 3.5 centimetres or um, if you're working imperial then it's three inches by one and a half inches. You can use any size block really, but just make sure that it's something that you can grab hold of quite nicely and that you're gonna be able to print with. So I'll start with the pink one first. So I've just got some fabric paint mixed up and all I do is just paint it onto one side of the block. Make sure you get a nice even coverage. So you don't want it too thick. Just want it to give you a good, good surface. There we are. So I start with my first one. So I'm just looking at the circle that I've that I've made. And I'm going to print just over the circle so that it looks like I'm actually using a continuous piece of fabric. I'm just pressing nice and firmly, just gently from side to side without actually moving the block. 
lift it off and that's your first print. I just paint it up again. And I really like using the wooden blocks as well because you get a really nice natural effect here. So it does actually look hand printed, which I like. So again, just moving that around. I've got one more pink to do. And then we can move on to the next colours. So I'm going to do one just down here. So as to not make too much of a mess, I've just got a piece of kitchen towel and I'm going to wipe off the excess paint so I'm ready to use the next colour. And I'm going to use a different side and this side's going to be my yellow. So same thing again, paint the fabric paint on, giving it a good even coating. So you can print. I'm going to do a couple up the top. So while I'm doing this, please do feel free to just pop a little hi into the comments. It's always nice to know where you're watching from today. If this is your first virtual village hall session or you've done lots of them. This one's actually a really great one, uh, the printing onto the fabric, if you're new to craft, because it really is so simple. If you can just paint a wooden block and put it on a piece of fabric, then you can really do this one. Got a couple more of this today, and we always love to see your photos um, of your makes on the virtual village hall. So if you tag us in, then we'll be able to see them. And um, you could, if you're doing this one today, then please feel free to take photos and put it in the comments. And if you tag me at I printed that, I'll be able to see those as well. If you're watching the recording then you can still have your say let us know what you're what you're up to um, and i will make sure that i go through afterwards i normally over the next couple of days i'll go through the comments just to see see who's uh, who's about so that's my final oh no, i've got a couple more orange ones to do I'll just do this and then I've got a little question for you that you might be able to help me with. Do one more. It's a nice easy one to do with children as well. Okay, I'll wipe the excess off before I forget. So just going back to the, the print of fabric, so I just wonder, I wasn't sure kind of how to describe this, if it kind of had a retro sort of 50s feel or if it was more kind of an 80s feel. So if you help me out, if you just let me know in the comments kind of your feelings on that, or it might be something completely different. It might be somewhere, somewhere in the middle. So if it's kind of a 50s or a, an 80s feel to it, then let me know, because I really can't decide. So I'm going now in with my grey colour, which is my last block colour. This one's a little bit thicker. I think it's something to do with the pigment in the in the black um, fabric paint. Always seems to come up a bit thicker. 
and I'm just going to need to stand up for this because I need to look over it to make sure it gets positioned correctly. That's it. And again, just give it a little wiggle without actually moving it. And that's the grey. Just got a few more of these and then we'll be moving on to wrapping our block with string. So this is just an off cut piece of wood. I think from some DIY project, I didn't go out and buy it specially. This is also a great one for using up remnants of fabric that you might have. Even if you don't print your own fabric, but you've got some spare bits of fabric, this doesn't take up an awful lot. So it's a great remnant buster. that as long as it's um like a cotton i would i would suggest to go with a cotton so that you can uh, wash it on quite a high temperature and then i'm going to pop one at the bottom and that's that's my blocks all printed i'm just going to give this another white so in a minute i'm going to be wrapping the string around it so make sure it's all clean you could wash it if you want and then dry it but just a piece of kitchen towel does the job perfectly so i'm just going to put this to one side let that dry a little bit and i'll show you how to do the next bit so here is my string it's just common old garden white string and i need to take some sellotape And I want to make sure I've got two bits. So one bit for the, the front end and one bit for the last end. So I tend to take two bits at the same time because sometimes because I have done it before. By the time I get to the end, I realise that I haven't got another bit to stick down the tape, And I have to start all over again. So just secure the string with the tape and then start wrapping around. I don't really think of any pattern at this point. I just randomly wrap the string. You could wrap it really wide. You could wrap it very tight. The only thing that I would suggest you don't do is to overlap it because when you print, the only thing that will get printed is the overlapped string. Let's just do a little wide one there and then I'm just going to secure the other piece of string just chop the piece off and then this is our block for making the lines on our pattern so back to our fabric you could dry that off with a hairdryer or leave that to dry overnight but it's it's not too bad actually so I'm just going to go straight in and this is where we need a plate rather than uh, brushes um, to to add the, um, the paint so just a plate apply the fabric paint this is a better way than painting onto the string because it gives you a better coverage so I like mine fairly thin because I don't want the lines I want the lines to be almost faint or well, a bit more than faint really because I, I don't want them sort of too solid or to have so much paint on that they end up splodging everywhere. So take your stringed covered block of wood and then just dab and making sure that all those lines get filled. I'm going to put a little bit more paint on. Oh, 
oh and I'm happy with that and then I can start printing over over my blocks so same again nice and firmly just a little wiggle but without actually moving it and then take it off back onto the plate ink it up again and apply So now I'm going to change to have the thinner side. I'm just going to add a little bit more paint. And I'll add some more blocks here. it's quite a therapeutic one to do and it's nice because you get a real sense of achievement that you've printed printed your own fabric and then if you make it into something too something to be really proud of. I'll just keep going with this. And you can see the pattern building up. I'll just do a few final ones and then I'm going to show you how to sew it and turn it into a reusable bowl cover. Put my last one just there. Okay. So that could be dried off with a hairdryer or left to dry overnight. And then if you make sure you read the instructions from the um, fabric paint manufacturer, they should be on the back. That would just tell you what you need to do. So normally it's leave it to dry for 24 hours and then to um, iron it with a hot iron on the back and that will set the fabric paint so that you can then wash it. Because obviously if this is reusable, we want to make sure that it gets a good wash each time. So bear with me for a couple of minutes. I'll just let you look at that while I um, clear my paints away and I'll get my sewing machine up and I'll show you the next bit. Actually, before I get my sewing machine, what we do need to do is to cut the fabric into the round. 
So here's a piece that I did earlier that's that's all nice and dry and uh, heat treated. So I put another piece of fabric underneath and I'm going to cut but through both layers I'm going to cut through to make this circle that I marked at the beginning that's two cent uh, two inches larger than the bowl. So you don't need a sewing machine to do the next bit, you can do it all by hand. Uh, just make sure you use a back stitch when you're doing it. to be too accurate but it's it's fairly much there as a circle and then with right sides together just take some pins and then I want to leave a gap so I'm just going to mark that there Slightly. Not mark that there, just with a couple of pins, so I remember. And then I'm just going to hold the fabric in place with just a few more pins, so it doesn't move when I'm sewing. Machine up, and I'll try and position you so that you can see what I'm doing. I've not done a sewing machine one on virtual village hall yet, so you have to bear with me. So let's just make sure you can see that. That's it, so you should be able to see what I'm doing. So just with a straight stitch, I've got mine on two and a half. Uh, stitch length two and a half and then I'm just going to use the width of the foot and start sewing around the edge
it. And there's my, I've come to my two pins that show my opening. So I've just gone back. That. And then just trim the excess thread. Take all the pins out and then we want to turn it the right side out. There we go. So ideally you would then press that. But today I'm just going to show you how to then add the channel where we put our um, elastic. So again, just taking uh, just over the width of the foot. I'm just going to sew all the way around. And then I'm going to sew as well along the bit that was opened to meet the end where I started. So quick back and then cut the thread, remove the excess. And that's given us a channel all the way around so we can insert insert our elastic so depending on the size of your elastic just make sure that it will fit into your channel nicely and move around I've got my bowl and I just want to make the fabric just needs to be about two-thirds round of the bowl so, so if that's half that's probably about two-thirds sorry the elastic the fabric so cut the elastic put the um use something like a safety pin on the end and then start threading it through just keep an eye on this end maybe just hold on to it because you don't want that to follow all the way through takes a little bit of time almost there just move some of that fabric round make sure it's evenly distributed at the end that's always a that's always a nice feeling when you get all the way round I'm just going to distribute that a little bit more, just making sure that end doesn't disappear. Then using the sewing machine, you just want to secure those ends together. I'm just 
go back and forth a couple of times. Take the excess thread off. And then really just start distributing that fabric. At which point it does look a lot like a bathing cap. There we are. And then this bit here, you just want to fold it under and then fold the back under. Let me get rid of that. It's a bit fiddly this bit. I'm going to work that in with my pin. And just pin it in place. Same with this one. Then back to my sewing machine. And then just sew that shut. the excess thread and there you have your bowl cover Ooh. Ooh. hand printed hand sewn reusable So thank you ever so much for joining me on the virtual village hall today. I hope that inspires you to get some bits of wood together, some string, and just have a go at printing your own fabric. It's been an absolute pleasure to show you how to do that today. I'm Rachel from I Printed That, and I look forward to seeing you another time on the virtual village hall. See you soon, bye.